This is Cruise Radio. Now more than ever, you should consider trip insurance for any kind of trip you take, not just cruises. Get a free quote at tripinsurance.com. Broadcasting from the tripinsurance.com studios in Jacksonville, Florida. This is Cruise Radio. Hey, how's it going? Thank you so much for checking out this episode of Cruise Radio. Very happy to have you here. This intro and this show is going to be straight and to the point because weather is deteriorating and we are getting some power flickering here. So we're going to jump right to our review of Carnival Glory with Heather. So Heather and her husband just returned from a seven-night cruise on Carnival Glory, and she joins us on the line to talk all about it. Hey there, Heather. Hey, Doug. Good to talk to you again, as we always do. I want to take a step back here. Now, we'll get to Carnival Glory in just a couple of moments here. What made you want to sail this seven-night cruise on Carnival Glory out of New Orleans? Well, we had um, actually had the same itinerary last year and through nobody's fault it was just circumstances beyond our control there were several things that happened that we wanted a a redo and so um, we had looked for different cruises I had actually wanted to go out of Galveston on the dream because we would have had um, Half Moon Key added to that but my husband had just started a new job and he was afraid that he wouldn't be able to get that extra time and so I said okay we're going to compromise then and we're going to get a suite on the glory since we can't go out of Galveston. <laughs> so Very good. So you're in Mississippi. You had to make your way down to New Orleans. About how far are you uh, drive-wise? Six hours. Six hours. Okay. So any pre-cruise time or is this more of a day of thing? No, no. We have learned to go the day before. Okay. Um, we always stay in Covington, uh, Louisiana before our cruises. And it's just, we, we love Covington. It's a cute little town and um, that that area and uh, Abita Springs, mm-hmm. um, which is, it's a, just a quaint little area. And it doesn't take too long to get from there to um, the port. It's just a, you know, basically a straight shot across Lake Pontchartrain mm-hmm. um, down to the port. Okay. Very cool. So you make your way to the port of New Orleans, the uh, Julia Street Cruise Terminal, I believe it is over there. How was the embarkation and how long was it from curb to ship? We kind of got in a little traffic jam. It took us, um, when we got close to the port, we were stuck in traffic for about 20 minutes. But that was the longest that we, um, well, we waited for anything. We had early embarkation because we had a suite. We were able to check in early and get the earliest check-in time. And so when we got there, there was hardly anybody in the waiting area. And so we got checked in and got seated in the suite area. Uh, I guess that was a a waiting period because we got there about 10 o'clock and um, they were going to start calling people on at 1045. And right at 1045, they called the diamond guests first and then suites were right after that. And so we were literally on the ship in less than five minutes. From wow, the time they started calling passengers. So, yeah, it was that was really nice. Awesome. So you make your way on board Carnival Glory. Um, I know you've sailed it last year as well, but collectively, what are your first impressions walking on board the ship? Well, I love the atriums, the big open atriums with the glass um, elevators and that just like that's the central meeting spot. I just, I love that design and that's the glory is not really miniature, but it's the, it's definitely smaller than like the dream class, Mm -hmm. but still, you know, amazing to walk into. So you said you booked a suite on this one. So how was the suite over your seven nights and what'd you think about it? It's going to be hard going back to anything, but (laughs) a suite, um, because we were priority, we were able to, to drop our bags off. We walked in, there is a, um, almost like a, a hallway, but, I mean, but not really. I mean, it's a cruise-sized hallway where you walk in at the door to the um, bathroom, two big closets in that area with a, a vanity, and then so much storage, we didn't even need it all. The room, I guess, is about a size and a half, the size of a regular balcony room, and then the balcony is just a little bit wider. It's not, well, a little bit longer, I guess. It's not really wider, but it had room enough for a lounge chair and then two other regular chairs with a little table in between. The only downside to this room that I could find was that there there was a lot of paneling that was not magnetic. And so I couldn't use a lot of my uh, magnet hooks that I had brought with me. Uh-huh. So that was, but I mean, that like, that's the only downside we could see. Yeah. Where your room was located, did you have any noise issues throughout the seven nights? 
the only noise we had was from the cabin next door to us that had kids. And they were kind of noisy. Um, but at night, everybody was asleep, I guess. Um, it was only really during the day that we really heard them. But above us, below us, we didn't hear anything. We were toward the front. Okay. Um, so we were on port side. And so it was. A, I think it was a good location. Yeah, for sure. Let's talk about the dining on this seven-night cruise. And we'll start at the top there on the Lido deck at the Lido Marketplace Buffet. Um, how was the food through there? And then how about the outside decks like the Guy's Burger and such? I had no complaints about the selection or the freshness or anything of the food. Every time, you know, any, you know, breakfast, lunch, whatever we got, it was always good. And there was a, a decent um, selection to choose from. Surprisingly enough, we did not get a guy's burger this entire cruise. I could not believe my husband did not want to get one. And I, I really, I mean, I'll eat one if he yeah. wants to go there, but that was not my choice of dining, um, but uh, he didn't want one, the whole crew. So we <laughs> ate at the, uh, we got tacos at the Blue Iguana, can, not really the cantina, but that little area. They don't have a, um, a, a real cantina on the glory, but um, we got burritos, breakfast burritos there, and um, got some tacos a couple of days. Do they have the, uh, I'm trying to think, is, is it the upstairs where the barbecue is on that ship? I believe so. We never even went up there, um, but I believe it is still up there. Okay. I gotcha. Did you go up there last time you were on by chance? We did not. No. Okay. J just not barbecue people? Well, being from Memphis. That's you know, true. That's all you had to say. We are really, really picky. Yeah, we're really no, I picky hear you. About I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how about the main dining room? What time dining did you have, and how was your experience in there? We had early seating, which was 6 o'clock, and... This was the first time that we were we had been seated um, on a cruise with other people that we did not know, and um, but it was we were seated with two sisters, two older sisters, and it was just delightful. They were a hoot, and um, we had a, a great time getting to know them, and we had a great dining staff. Did not have a, a single complaint um, about the meals. Um, they were just they were excellent. Again, uh, much improved over last year. So you sat with two random people. Like it's always hit or miss, right? Like it can go really good or really bad. It's uh, it's one of those things. Like, did y'all prefer to sit? Like, did you ask to sit with just y'all two, or were you cool with sitting with other people? I think we originally were going to be seated um, by ourselves, but we were off in a corner, like where we couldn't see anything. Mm -hmm. And you know, we like to see those shows, you know, when they do the showtime. And so we asked to be seated, you know, closer to the open dining area. And so I guess they had to compromise and put us with um, two other people. Um, so that, and we originally were like, oh, this is not going to be fun, but it ended up being great. Oh, good. That's awesome. So did you do like the steakhouse or anything on your cruise? We didn't. Um, we had uh, just a good enough experience with the food that we just didn't really feel like we needed to go to the steakhouse. Um, it really was great. The, the actual steaks that we had on, you know, steak and lobster night, they were excellent. So awesome. we just, you know, we didn't feel like we needed to spend the extra money. Um, mm -hmm. We would rather, you know, do other fun stuff. Yeah. No, I hear you a hundred percent. So let's talk about the entertainment on your seven night cruise. What did y'all think of it? Um, again, and I, I'm going to reference our cruise from last year. It was so much better this time around. Um, the playlist production cast, every show we went to was so good and they just, it just seemed like they were, this cast had been together forever. Um, the music was great. Um, and it's, you know, this, the same shows that we've seen several times, like Epic Rock and um, Getaway Island, um, which is, you know, the, the, the campy little um, show with all the Jimmy Buffett music and everything. Um, but it was, everything was so good and the singers were great. We, we really enjoyed each one that we went to. How about the music uh, around the ship or any kind of like comedy clubs or anything? We didn't go to the comedy club. Um, I think we just kind of ran out of time. One of our favorite things to do was to go to the atrium and just, you know, try to find a seat and uh, listen to the Glory Rock Band because they were always so good. Even, you know, our favorite is, of course, the 80s music. Um, anything they would sing, the whole crowd would get into it, and um, that was a lot of fun. I think they had the um, violin players some. Um, we were there, you know, just to catch the tail end of a couple of their sets a couple of times, but, um, I think that was really the only main music, you know, 
around the ship that we really paid attention to. Yeah, I hear you. So let's talk about the sea days as far as crowds and congestion on board. How'd that stack up? Well, like I said, it was hard to get a seat in the atrium, um, listen to the band, or if we were going to play trivia. It was hard to find a seat really anywhere in the, in the atrium area. And this was over Memorial Day weekend, so we knew it was going to be crowded. We just didn't really expect it to be that crowded. Um, mm-hmm. And, of course, the pool deck was always crowded. We're not pool people, so that really didn't matter to us. Surprisingly, the um, trying to get an elevator, it was hardly ever an issue. The only time it was an issue was right after dinner or trying to get to dinner or something like that. Um, other than that, we most of the time we were in an elevator by ourselves. Nice. Did the ship feel crowded? Only when we were at, in the atrium or if we were moving through the pool deck, gotcha. you know, to go to the, the buffet or something. We never had trouble finding a table um, and in the buffet. We did have a little trouble um, getting a seat for one of the shows, but only one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it really did not feel as crowded as I think it probably was. How about the casino as far as the smoke situation in and around it? Because like on that, where that I think it's like on what deck uh, eight or so, whatever that deck is where the casino is, you have to, it's kind of like one of the main passageways going from forward to aft around the ship. So smoke situation? It was pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Um, the first few days, it was not bad. We didn't stay in the casino very long. We, you know, like you said, it was a walkway. And most of the time, it was not too bad just walking through but we came in a couple of times from the other side. I can't remember if it's the port side or the starboard side where it's there's not a walk like a true walkway, like it's not open. And so the smoke was pretty bad in that area. But it didn't it didn't like waft down to the atrium or anything like that. So I was I was pleasantly surprised that it was not worse than it was. Mm, okay. So how about the ports of call you into? This was a uh, Key West and over to the Bahamas. So give us your first port of call, what you did there, and then just go to the next one. We went to Key West first, and um, we rented a golf cart from Pirate Scooter Rentals, which was the best way to get around Key West, in my opinion. The, of course, the only thing with that was you had to pay to park everywhere you went. We were prepared for that. We did not care. We just wanted a better way to get around than having to walk everywhere. We went to the Butterfly Conservatory, which is just a beautiful experience. Just You walk in and the butterfly, it's just the prettiest thing. Um, and they have um, Rhett and Scarlet, the two flamingos, which are, you know, really cool to look at. Um, and they were being noisy, but that was fun watching them. And, of course, we got our picture made at the southernmost point which, you know, I think require that you have to do that when you're a Mm -hmm. tourist in Key West. We went to uh, Fort Zachary State Park just to, you know, see what the water looked like if we ever got back down there and wanted to go snorkeling or something. And then for lunch, we ate at uh, Margaritaville and um, had a good time there. Um, The food was really good. I was kind of expecting it to be like a Chili's or something, but it was the food was really good. Um, and then, of course, we went to Kermit and got a chocolate-covered key lime pie on a stick. And that pretty much um, rounded our day out at Key West. Kermit's is the key lime pie place, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was like on Shark Tank like 10 years ago, Kermit's was. And I'm surprised it's... Uh, oh, really? Yeah, I'm happy to see it's still around. That's awesome. And then you hit, uh, hit up a port in the Bahamas next? We went to Preport and... Um, we had pre-booked uh, taxi service because um, our previous experience was a little chaotic trying to get from the port to Paradise Cove, which is where we were going this time as well. And so we already we just went ahead and, and pre-booked that service. We went to Paradise Cove, which is also called Dead Man's Reef. We had gone last year and enjoyed it so much that we wanted to go back. We had pre-booked with them, um, paid for you know most everything that we could online and got an umbrella and a couple of chairs and it's known for snorkeling and so that that's what we did we enjoy snorkeling wherever we go and so we snorkeled for a little while and I was hoping to see turtles and we I was almost ready to get out of the water and all of a sudden I turned my head and there was a turtle and so my husband got the GoPro and he recorded that and so we got out of the water ate some conch fritters which were delicious and um, went back um, a little while later, and um, there were three more turtles. Wow. 
Awesome. And so we got to, I mean, it was like they didn't even care that we were there. They were just, you know, swimming around, eating grass, <laughs> and, you know, we didn't touch them. We were trying, I mean, I was having to, like, purposely get out of the way because they were just so nonchalant about us being around them. And that was, that was so it was magical. I just, I was staring at him like, I need to, to just sear this memory into my brain right. because it was they were so close to us. So that was definitely amazing. And then um, we had a little incident because um, a storm came up and we could see the clouds coming in. I was like, um, Michael, I think we need to get out of the water. <laughs> so uh, we got out and sure enough, it started pouring down rain. The only bad thing that happened was that when so we had a preset time for our taxi service to come pick us up and when I called them and I said we need to come you know we did, did go ahead and get back to the ship early because everybody else had left the bus that had been there before they had already left so th- the people that at the resort place they were ready to go home and so we were the only ones there so I called them and I said can you come pick us up and he said I'll send one of my other people that was fine. Well, she finally gets there and we're leaving to go, you know, we think we're on our way to the port. And then she pulls off and she goes to this little store to pick up some food for her daughter. (laughs) And, and I'm like, okay, that's different. And I, when, you know, I don't think we had ever really experienced island time. That's a real thing. So uh, she we, she gets back in the car and she thanks us for letting her do that. And we're like, sure, no problem. Well, then we think we're going to you know go on to the port. And then she pulls off on a side road and it looks so sketchy. And I just look at my husband. I'm like, what is going on? And so she pulls into this house. And I don't know if it was her house or her daughter's house, but she takes the food into this house. And then she takes us uh, back to the port, you know, the rest of the way. And we just laugh about that. I'm like, okay, (laughs) well, I guess that's okay. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. So that was, um, that was a very interesting end to our day uh, in Freeport. Yeah, I would say so. And then was Nassau the last port? Yeah, Nassau was the last one. And we actually did a snorkeling excursion through the ship. Um, it was later on in the day, and um, so we were able to sleep late and just, you know, get breakfast and not really do a whole lot until we had to meet our excursion. Um, we went out to two different places to snorkel, and the only bad thing that happened there was everybody was getting off the back of the boat, and the captain had said, if you're comfortable, you can jump off the front. And both of us were, were like, sure, that's fine. So we had all of our snorkeling gear on and my husband jumped off and he was fine. And this other um, smaller child had jumped off and I went to jump off and my fin, my snorkel fin slipped and I lost my balance and ended up falling, hitting my leg on the, on the edge of the boat, falling in the water, losing my snorkeling mask. The captain had to jump off the boat to dive down and get my snorkel mask and um hurt my leg and but michael said my husband he said do you want to get back on the boat i'm like no i want to go snorkeling (laughs) so we snorkeled uh in that spot and then um and i mean my knee was killing me but i was like i i i want to experience this Uh so the, the coral and the fish it was just beautiful it was it was so beautiful I would do it again in a heartbeat, even with a a bad knee. It was just, it was amazing. Gosh, I'm glad you were okay though. That could have been bad. Well, that was, so that was another first when we got back to the ship, we were going to kind of go, I wanted to see the new port because uh, the new port in Nassau had just opened. And so, you know, it was, it was really nice when we got there. Um, You know, we had a a specific spot. They had covered areas for everybody to have um, like a meeting spot for excursions and stuff. And I wanted to kind of explore the shopping area and everything, but my knee was hurting too bad. And so we had to get back on the ship and I ended up going to the um, medical center um, just to see if, if they felt like I needed to get x-rays or anything like that. And he said, he felt like it was, it was not, you know, it wasn't anything. It was just kind of a soft tissue Mm -hmm. bruise or something. So um, we felt confident that, I, you know, I could wait until um, we got back home. That was the last, not the last day, but that was the last port day that we had. So it ended up being okay. Anyway, had a lot of firsts on this, on this yeah. trip. Is it back to normal now? 
Not quite. Um, it's been almost three months. The doctor, when I came home, said that he wanted me to go to physical therapy, but I was like, I don't have time for that. So right. <laughs> probably gotcha. should go ahead and do that. Gotcha. Well, so you had two, what was it, two C days back to New Orleans? Just one. Just we one. Just had, wait, was it one? It was two. Yeah, I guess it was two. Gotcha. Um, and then you make your way back there to the Big Easy to debark. How was that process? Again, I don't know how we can go back to a regular room. Having a suite just made both embarkation and debarkation the smoothest we've ever had. They had a note for us in our room um, the night before debarkation, and it said, you know, we're going to, you're going to meet in the Golden Dynam room at seven o'clock. And so about 645, we went down and got, you know, in our area and they uh, had everybody line up. I took a screenshot of my clock on my phone and it was 6.54 when we got in line to leave the dining room. And by 7.10, we were in our truck. Now, part of that was aided by the fact that when we got to the port, we tipped the porter a 20. And my husband said, do you have any recommendations on where we can park? And the porter goes over and lets us in the priority parking. Friends of ours had told us to do that. Uh-huh. And so I, when we were able to do that, I texted them and I said, you have cracked the code. Yeah. So that was an amazing thing that happened too. But um, being able to get off the ship and not being in the chaos of debarkation was just, it's worth the extra money that we spent for the suite. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. And plus you could always uh, go out there and hang out on your balcony, your own little piece of real estate too, if it gets too crowded in the public spaces. Yes. Um, so any first time tips to offer anyone sailing Carnival Glory? I would say when you first get on the ship to just kind of get a, a, a good lay of the land, so to speak, because trying to get to the dining room is the, um, at least the platinum dining room where we had dinner. It's a little choppy. You can't just get from one side of level three to the other side. Just by walking, you have to either go up or go down. But getting a good lay of the land, see how you need to go up and everything, that would be uh, my suggestion to do that. I can't think of really anything else except just after you do that, just go get a drink and sit in the sun somewhere. I don't know. It sounds like you tipping that guy in the parking lot worked out for you, too, though. Well, yeah, that too. <laughs> that's not specifically to the glory. Anywhere you're, anytime you're, you're, uh, you're in that port, that's a, that's something we will do from now on. Did you read any reviews about like uh, all the break-ins that happen at that port parking lot? Well, so we were at Arado Street. Okay. We weren't in Julia. We weren't on Julia Street. Okay, um, gotcha. And so we had not seen anything specific about, but it it had. I had seen some about the other areas, um, and that was that did make me a little nervous. That was another reason that I wanted, you know, to try to get better parking. And and being on that level, I feel like it was a little bit more visible. Mm -hmm. But, um, and we got to the parking garage fairly early. Uh, Of course, everybody else had the same idea, but we got there fairly early because I wanted to make sure that we got a a decent spot. But I wasn't nervous on the cruise. I I really wasn't nervous about um, if that was going to happen to us or not. Now, if we had had to park like in overflow parking or something like that, I think I may have been a little bit more worried about it, but um, I wasn't. And I don't think I will be if we are able to park in that same situation. Yeah. I mean, normally if you're parking at the cruise port, pretty much you're in good hands or better hands than an offsite lot. I know like here in Jacksonville, there's an offsite lot right across from the cruise port. And uh, a couple of months ago, 32 catalytic converters were, <laughs> were stolen while the people were on the cruise. I was oh, like, my God. Good gosh. I, I yeah. Don't, it's wild. It's, uh, but it's happening not just in Jacksonville. It's happening uh, in a lot of places I'm reading about people yeah. trying to uh, well, be nefarious. Yeah, and before I had, I had heard about stuff like that happening in New Orleans um, for several weeks uh, leading up to the cruise. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, so looking back on this cruise, what was the biggest highlight for you? Swimming with the sea turtles, for nice. sure. That's been on my bucket list for I don't know how long. And it was just, it was magical. It was, I, I, if I could do that every single time, it would just, I don't think it would ever get old. They were beautiful. And I wish we could have stayed in the water a lot longer. That was definitely the highlight for both of us, I think. Yeah, they're, they're certainly majestic creatures. Yep. It's, it's so cool watching them swim out there. Well, your final thoughts of Carnival Glory. Well, I would sail on her again. I do believe that she is moving. I think the Liberty is taking her place. 
the last I heard, I thought, I think she's going, I think she's actually going to Port Canaveral, I think. But I, I would sail on her again in a heartbeat. Um, I don't know that I, I will ever be able to go to back to a, a regular balcony room after having a suite, though. I think I'm going to have to just, you know, con- try to convince my husband every time <laughs> if we <laughs> cruise on Carnival, uh, we're just going to have to get a suite. That's definitely, I mean, I have no complaints about that room. I think people, you know, they complain because Lori's a little bit older, um, mm-hmm. but I I didn't see any problems. And the bathroom was huge. We had a shower tub and it was, I mean, so much. Now it wasn't you know, the size of a regular tub, sure. but it was much bigger than the regular room showers. So it was, it was amazing. Awesome. Well, it sounds like it was a nice redemption cruise for you compared to Carnival Glory last year. We've been talking with Heather about her cruise aboard Carnival Glory to the Western Caribbean. Always great talking to you, Heather. Thanks, Doug. Do you have a story or a tip to report? Let us know. Email tips at cruiseradio.net. A big question we get at Cruise Radio is, how do I know if I need trip insurance? Simple answer. If you're getting on a plane, taking a road trip, or getting on a cruise ship, you need to have travel insurance. Hey, it's Doug Parker from my friends at TripInsurance.com. Not not only does TripInsurance.com protect your vacation investment, but it also gives you peace of mind in case anything were to go wrong on your trip. How do they do it? They offer three different types of trip insurance policies. Good, better, and best. One policy for every vacation budget. But it doesn't just stop there. They're up to 40% lower when you shop around on other comparison sites. Plus, TripInsurance.com offers 24-hour customer support before, during, and after your trip, online claims assistance, and travel alerts to let you know what's going on at your destination. But find out for yourself. Check out TripInsurance.com. All right, Dougie, let's see what we got for you, buddy. Cruise Radio is produced at the TripInsurance.com studios in Jacksonville, Florida. Get cruise news, ship reviews, and money-saving tips every Thursday on Cruise Radio. If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the show. If you want to help spread the word, give Cruise Radio a five-star review. Find Cruise Radio where you listen to your favorite podcast or online at cruiseradio.net. I'm your announcer.